These are the top 6 recommendations for selecting the dimensions of the capillary tube in an air conditioner that operates with our 410A. 1. The performance of capillary tubes in the air conditioner depends on both their length and diameter, as these factors determine their total restriction. 2. It is essential to consider that a change in diameter, even by a percentage, can impact the flow more significantly than an equal change in tube length. 3. Flow restriction can also be adjusted through tube length. When the tube is longer, the flow becomes slower. However, it is crucial to avoid excessively long lengths, as increasing restriction and excessively reducing flow can be uneconomical and inefficient. 4. On the other hand, reducing the tube length gradually increases the flow until reaching a critical point where each further reduction in length causes a faster increase in flow rate. 5. It's important to note that, at the point where the tube is very short, small changes in length can generate significant increases in flow. At this stage, the tube length no longer significantly affects the flow, and the tube acts more like an orifice than a capillary. 6. For optimal operation, and to avoid issues, it is recommended to maintain the tube length within a range of 5 to 16 feet, approximately 1.5 to 4.9 meters. While there are exceptions to this general rule, in most cases, staying within this range will be beneficial for the daily operation of the air conditioner. The capillary for our 410A is primarily utilized in air conditioning systems. In the following tables, we have the capillary measurements, with diameter in inches, and length in meters, for the most common cooling capacities, in BTUs per hour. 